Look, Bill, you got a date tonight. What? You got a date tonight. No, I know. I feel He's denying it. Well, I got used to it. I don't need to every marriage, but I think a lot of women will be jealous. Oh, it doesn't really bother me. Well, I did a bit. I had to go at the local, was it local slappers? I wanted to go at, I got some of them. One girl told her where she lived, and she lived quite close. And I told them all to bugger off. You know, we really had to go at them. She lived on the moors, didn't she? Up nearby. And I told them very seriously to bugger off. Hey, um. Well, we'll be. Yeah, there's a couple of very interesting books. My dad's read them. My dad's very much more, you know, a scientist. Uh, and uh, he enjoyed the, there's some books being written about Gay and I've forgotten the author. I read one a, a while back when I could still read um, books, you know, be able to read novels and things. And, but yeah, it was pretty interesting, quite difficult to understand, because sort of science in it. Well, it was to do how the scientists understand the Gay network. But the scientists do understand that the plants and things are all very much interconnected. It's got some sort of memory. And, uh, well, they, they, even the scientists were suggesting there's some sort of memory here. And, I mean, if you sort of had a debate, and you've got the Scientologist, and he says, oh, you know, that was an example of um, the, the woman having the right, because they're very feminist, the Scientologists, very feminist in America. Feminism in America, and they said the, the the woman had a right to be saved. But he kind of had an ended argument. He'd sort of peter out, thinking, well, why did she have the right to be saved? The Christian would say that, uh, being a European source Christianity, he would say that God was her judge of her virtue, and then, and that it was benign judgment, and therefore that is why he, w he wouldn't accept that anything, you know happened other than it was benign judgment and that it was a religious experience and then the Jedi would take it a lot further the Jedi would say if the plant that was the dark side of plants because it was an infectious fungus so and then he would say if it's the dark side they would want something in return and then he said well the tadpoles were the good ones because they were the animals and they'd remembered love and as far as animals can concerned love is the only virtue and he'd beam at that because the Jedi would like the idea. And he said, no, you know, that love is the only virtue to animals. It's true, it is. Uh, but then the Christian would say, well, hang on, you know, I'm taking on your on board your idea, so that I don't really agree with them. Right? You were saying that God would uh, would hold back if virtue was, was right, and God would then not pass judgment. And I think. Uh, a scientist would say it was very foolish to wade into a river with the intention of catching a fungus. And then if you talk to a psychiatrist, you know, he'd, 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 he'd fob you off and say, oh, come on, you know, it's just your mental condition. And you're imagining that. And then if you said, well, you know, I've been to the doctor and he's told me it's a fungus, you know, he'd fob you off yeah. once again. But then uh, he's not into, the psychiatrist would not be interested he, in, in any of this stuff, okay? It's because he wants you to live in reality. He doesn't want you to look at all, all the engines and the, the stuff that lies beneath, okay? It's like, it's an engine that's lying beneath everything. Gare is one of the engines, okay? The scientists might go and write a book about how the en they think that engine works. Yeah. But it's not part of your life to be a part of that engine. That engine just goes smoothly underneath everything else. Um, and you're not going to be able to get yourself together, get your world together, get your life together if you at all have anything to do with this engine and that's why the psychiatrist turns your mind away from it at every opportunity you turn your mind away from how this engine works you examining it looking at it thinking uh, in what way shall I meddle with it in what way shall I interfere with it from myself or anyone else uh, and turn your mind away from it every single opportunity he'll turn you back to reality 
being a part of it and enjoying your life. You actually say, you know, if you hadn't run away from the mental health authorities, you would put yourself in that position. You know, it's what, you know, and, and you know, they just have ways of fobbing off any argument to do with the, uh, anything else other than just enjoy your life uh, and and stay in this sort of straight line. I was going to say this straight line. You stay on that, you stay on that, on those rails, okay? You stay on those rails. And those rail tracks will lead you to good places. And they don't, don't come off them. Don't think that there's anything to be gained. Because as far as the psychiatrist is concerned, no. Nothing to be gained. Uh, and the jailer would probably then say, I very much agree with you. But he said, if you're in that position, you know, I, the, the jailer said, I've got nothing to do with the pagans or magic or whatever you want to call it, he'd say. But he'd say, uh, if she knew how to do that, then that could, that potentially saved her life. Um, and, you know, I've got the fungus that broke out a while ago. Uh, and uh, I've had two AIDS tests since, and they were clear. So the Jedi would say, perhaps you need these, res you know, and the woman does need these resources, just in case, you know. It's a weapon, another weapon to defend herself. You know, just in case something happens and she's in a position of danger, and she's able to cope, and she's able to deal with it, she's, she's able to find the resources to protect herself, you know.